Hey, oh, man. Yeah. I was wondering. Like, okay. Sorry. Yeah, man. Sorry for all those technical difficulties. Thanks again for agreeing to do this. I'm really excited to ask you these questions, man. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah, so everybody. Yeah, man. Ah, uh, so guys, this is Potomac Cast, and bro, the first question I'm gonna ask you, mind you, these are all questions from fans. Um, what are some comments that make you shake your head? <laughs> um, what comments you shake my head? Well, to be honest, like as of what happened today, I'll say a lot of like old soccer jokes. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I occasionally enjoy, like every blue moon, I would enjoy, uh, you know, a soccer joke. But at this point, like it's just overused and they're not even creative anymore. It's <laughs> this, at least be creative if you're going to do it. And everybody's just making the same thing over and over again, useless, lame, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I just find them old or, hmm. I'll say, it. Uh, I don't know. It honestly depends on the video that I make that I get comments. It's like, ah, that, that was, that was uncalled for. How How about a list video? If you're making um either a list video or even a devil fruit video, what are some comments on devil fruit videos that you've done that you're just like, come on, why? <laughs> so yeah, someone asked. Okay, okay, that's perfect. So someone asked me when I did my devil fruit videos and how they work and how they operate. Um, I would get very unique ones. Like someone asked me, what if I grab two devil fruits, blend it up into a smoothie, and <laughs> would I still die? And I was just like, I never heard that one before. What? No one's ever turned it into a smoothie. But it's just two devil fruits. I'm like, I think you'll, I think you will still die. Like, it's. <laughs> but the or, rule is like if you. you the rule is if you eat two, you die, right? Yes. If you eat more than one devil fruit, you will die. And so, <sighs> some people like to bring up a certain someone, I'm not going to say for spoiler reasons, as like, oh, but what about him? I mean, just because this individual was able to do it doesn't mean that everyone else can do it. Even to this day, it's still a theory going on on how he even did it in the first place. He probably made a smoothie. <laughs> if he did, I don't know. <laughs> if he out, huh, I guess that's the key. Someone even asked them, um, what if I injected a devil fruit inside myself? I'm like, like inject it like a, like a, you know, what's it called? Like, like a syringe and like, like IV. Like an IV. I'm like, I, I, I guess you still get the power. Like, I don't know, it feels like a lot just to bite it. All you can do is just bite it and you'll get it. I feel like it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's like a lot of steps to just, when you could just eat it, like, that's <laughs> that's weird. But another question I really wanted to know from you is, what do you think was the time of the golden age of anime? Huh. The time of the golden age of anime. Golden age of anime. Do you even think there was, do you even think there was a golden age of anime? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say that they're kind of, kind of wasn't. It all depends on which decade you're talking about. Because if you think about it, like during the early 80s, the, the big, you can say the big three or the big ones back then was Dragon Ball, Fist of the North Star, Sailor Moon, OG um, JoJo before the um, reboot. And mm -hmm. then, but if I had to pick one, it's between either the early 2000s, because, you know, you have Full My Alchemist, we had Naruto, we had Bleach, we had a lot of the known anime we have today that everybody's, like, around, is around that time. Early 2000s or, like, late 90s going into the early 2000s, because we also had One Piece. But I can argue that, honestly, I can say now is a great time, because there's so many anime, there's so many better quality better action, better storytelling. Yeah. I will definitely say now. I would lean towards now is like the best time. I was, feel, I was definitely feeling the same way, you know, especially when I saw that question. I feel like, especially now, uh, anime is so accepted, way more accepted than when we were younger. And mm -hmm. I feel like the, 
the kind of I think there's even a preference to anime over just regular uh, American cartoons, even. Mm-hmm. So I feel like now, if anything, it's definitely the golden age of anime. Now, speaking of uh, just like great anime, what was like the first anime that you saw that got you into anime? The first anime. It's so funny. Um, I've been watching Dragon Ball Z like my entire life to the point where I didn't even realize it was an anime. I thought just it was just a cartoon. I thought it was just a regular lineup cartoon. And, and for a while, I never counted it as anime. I was just like, oh, I just watched Dragon Ball Z. Everybody and their mom watches Dragon Ball Z. So, so true. And but. But what really got me into anime, which what, what anime that made me explore other anime was definitely Full Metal Alchemist. And I mean the first one, not Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. I saw the first Full Metal Alchemist, the first version. Nice. And I was just like, oh, this might seem different because I always watch Dragon Ball Z. Maybe I'll watch this. And it definitely, it, and overall, it actually changed me and what I like. Because before I was, I just loved action action-packed. I didn't really care for dialogue or words. I just wanted to see people hit each other. <laughs> and But now that they're Full Metal Alchemist, because of that one, I care about plot more than anything now. Now I pay attention to the story. I like how everything connects. So for me, like everybody has their certain preference. And even though I talk about a lot of shonen on my um, TikToks, I honestly just love a great plot. You give me a good plot, I don't care what genre it is. If as long as the plot's good, I'll watch it. But Full My Alchemist really got me into that. I love how it was, it had everything. It literally had everything. It made me think, it made me piece things together. It shocked me. For To me, it was also, I, I technically counted it as my first graphic one because of what happened with the whole Show Tucker thing. I was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. But definitely. Cartoons are not showing that. Yeah. It was crazy. Do, do you feel like it it influenced you as a human being? Uh, what do you mean by implement? Like, uh, do you feel like it had a really big impact on who you are? And if not, what anime do you feel like had an impact on who you are as a person? Um, I'll definitely still say Full Metal Alchemist had an impact on me because it talked on an issue that I actually kind of had because I, I still have it, but not as much as I did when I was growing up. Is that I had a I had a phobia of death. Really, I feared death <laughs> a lot. Man, I mean, I still do, but not on the level that I used to. But I feared death so much. And because I, I knew a lot of family members in my life that um, passed. And so I guess like for a good while, like I was surrounded by just people like dying around me. So oh. It made me, I guess you can say, cope with the idea because, you know, they lost their mom. And, you know, usually in certain anime stuff like that, you... In TV shows, they will give you the whole, oh, if everything's better, um, they got their mom back and stuff like that. But no, they didn't do that. They were just like, no, she's gone. She's gone, gone. And we have to cope with that. And like they cope with death because a lot of the biggest thing, though, because the biggest thing in the show was about death and trying to um, overcome being immortal. And I thought I thought Im- being immortal was the dopest thing ever. And now after watching the show and then learning more, I'm just like, ah. Immortality doesn't sound as great as it used to sound. Yeah. So you know, I think my outlook on death. That's that's such a great point, man. Um, what I I know it's probably just a little off topic, but what made you? You said that you're not as afraid of death now as you were. What made? What helped you get over that fear? Slightly. Um, I'll just say acceptance that the reality of it's like there's I mean there's nothing you can do about it it's it's the inevitable so instead of just focusing not just you know like live your life be around the ones you love and things like that man it's just like oh and I'll say that
I'll say that. I don't know how to say that. It really, I guess, opened my eyes to like, yeah, the most and more important things. And, or some people will say like, oh, death is just like going to sleep. You really, when you, plus even when you die, you, you wouldn't know you did. So, I don't know, it just made me cope with the idea. I'm like, oh, I mean, it helped me out, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I'm still trying to figure it out, but <laughs> I don't really know how to answer that. Like, I'm still trying to figure it out, but I don't know. I just, just acceptance helped me out. That's beautiful, man. And, you know, what you were saying about Full Metal Alchemist, I think until this moment, I didn't realize that it is a story about acceptance. Like, you have to accept that people go. Immortality is not for us. Here are the problems with immortality. That's such a great and interesting message that is just not played in cartoons, you know, American cartoons at least. And uh, I think that it's interesting also that it had a really good sub and dub, but a lot of people prefer the dub version. How do you feel about the dub version of it? Do you feel like it's one of, do you feel like it's uh, anime with a better dub than sub? I will definitely say I prefer the dub. So I watched the first version of Full Metal Alchemist in sub and then I watched Brotherhood in dub. And then I went back and watched it in dub, the first version, and see the difference. And honestly, I definitely say that the dub was great. I prefer the dub. The dub, all the voices pretty much match what I thought they would think if they spoke in English. Like everybody, especially especially Colonel Mustang and um, Major Armstrong. Those were spot on. I was just like, this is exactly what I think they would sound like if they spoke English. So true. And in general, how do you feel about sub versus dub? The, the classic anime, <laughs> classic anime question. So for me personally, it, it just all depends. Like there's some anime that I watch in sub and there's some anime I watch in dub because it all depends. Like if the anime is long, mm -hmm. then I watch it in dub because I like to multitask and the ability to Maybe not 100% see at the time, but able to understand what's going on very helps. It helps a lot. And sometimes I just watch sub because if I, I think the voice acting is better in sub. So for me, it just all depends on the anime. But like, for example, um, I prefer I prefer Fire Force in sub, but I prefer My Hero in dub. Interesting. Knowing that both are good, but like I prefer one over the other for different animes. No, that's a, that's actually a really that's actually a really interesting point. Um, and you know, speaking of Fire Force, Fire Force is an anime that gets so much criticism. Um, <laughs> and I heard that it's, lately. it's I don't know why. Yeah, it gets a lot of criticism, and it made me think about what anime in general people dislike and you probably thought you might dislike hearing it from other people but ended up liking is there an anime for you that was like that that you just heard bad things about you were like i'm probably gonna hate this anime and then you watched it and you were like this is great this is actually good i'll say that i'll say there's two so the one definitely the first one was one piece i thought one piece I, I listened to all the people what people said about One Piece, the negative stuff about One Piece, and I was just like, oh, it's too long. And so I avoided like the play. I was like, no, I'm not watching it. I'm not feeling this animation. I'm not doing that. It's probably right. It probably does suck. So I'm not going to I'm not going to risk it all. And until so my co-worker convinced me, because he because a lot of the cool thing is for those of them, uh, like I work in, the, I'm in the military and there's a lot of people, military folks watch anime too. And because uh, really? I have my office space to watch his anime. And, and everybody has their own purposes. Like, I have a friend who's all about Naruto. I have my coworker who's all about One Piece. And I was just a middle guy. I was like, oh, I, I had a friend who liked Dragon Ball Z. 
and they would talk about they would argue over characters just like any other person would. We all had our desks right in our uniform. Like, oh, I don't know. I feel like Sasuke was Sasuke was great. People would be like, no, Sasuke wasn't that great. We we would have those conversations at work. <laughs> That's amazing. So Yo, the fact that you be a weeb at work is incredible. I know. <laughs> it was it was really awesome. And um my friend, my coworker, he talked about One Piece and he like talked about it a lot. He hyped it up. And she's so like, huh, I guess I'll give it a try. And plus, um, I like to write manga. I'm in the process of writing like an isekai. But a more interesting isekai, not the not the standard stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking it's I've great. Gotta, I've got to <laughs> hear it, man. I really want to really see your manga. Appreciate that. But um, in my thing, I was looking up stuff, and they'll give you like sources from where these um, – for example, I was looking up abilities, and they were talking about abilities and what characters from different pop culture had these abilities or were similar to ones. And everyone I looked up always referenced One Piece. Like, One Piece had this. One Piece had this. One Piece had this. I was like, One Piece has, like, literally almost every ability that I ever looked up. Okay, fine. I'll watch it. I'll give it a try. And then, lo and behold, I'm not going to lie, the first couple episodes, I was just sitting here like, this is going his age right now. What's going on? This dude is loud, Luffy. Like he eats like crazy, and then I was just like, okay. But the more I watched it, it's like, huh? Okay, okay. And for those who were still wondering to watch it, like I'm being honest, One Piece is a shonen slow burn. Like it's not one of those ones that just grip you, uh, like right off the bat. It depends on you. Like, some people say that they were gripped, like, 200 episodes in. I wouldn't say that I was that person. I was gripped in, I would say, 20, 30 episodes in because of some of the, the events that happened. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. So when I hear people say, oh, uh, it only gets good after 200 episodes, I'm sitting here like, what? What do you guys mean? Like, I, like, I like that one guy that you guys forgot about the, the one thing. I thought that was awesome. But... Um, the second anime that I felt like that was Tokyo Ghoul a little bit. I mean, Tokyo Ghoul is still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... It gets a lot of, that one gets, that's a controversial comment right there. That gets yes, a lot is. of hate. But the only thing is wow, that. Oh, nice, now, man. Definitely is good. That Tokyo Ghoul, the first season was not bad. Like, as afterwards that people were just like, okay, yeah, it goes off the deep end. But I just thought it was bad altogether. I just I didn't see the first season. I just heard that Tokyo Ghoul wasn't that great. And the only thing good about it was the theme song, the opening. And I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot since it was on Funimation. I was like, oh, I'll just watch it since it's one of those animes that everybody knows. And I did like the first season. The first season was great. And I was like, okay, I like that. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Then as I progress through the seasons, then I was like, oh, well, <laughs> a lot better. Oh, a uh, favorite anime opening, man. <sighs> that is so hard. Favorite anime opening. Or at least what makes the top five. What would make your top five? I'll say that will make my top five. If we're going off based off just music alone, definitely Fire Forces first opening. Fire Forces, so fire, catchy yeah. for me, so catchy. Same thing with um, Demon Slayer's first opening. Yeah. And if I had to go old school, it'd be Yu Yu Hakusho's. Yes. I just People love don't that give it enough beat credit, credit like, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I actually work. Sometimes I actually work out to that song too. Nice. What's? Do you have a favorite anime song that you work out to? I actually have a whole. See, when I so in the military, we have this program called the Running Clinic, and basically it helps people, you know, um, run better and uh, just like just a running group. And interesting. Mm-hmm. And then I have a playlist, and every time they get me psyched up because I I, I hate running. Like if if I'm not in a situation where it requires it, I I don't really do it. And um, to get my mind off of it, I would play anime openings and run to them and listen to them. So to get my mind off of the thing, so I have a whole playlist of just anime openings that I just run to and just start. And it starts off with the Fire Force one to get me all amped up. Like okay, 
Fire Force. Then it goes into <laughs> the day from the uh, My Hero's first opening. Nice. Wow. Okay, man. Yo, I I like that a lot. Like I I um I definitely listen to uh, Fire Force too. I think I also listen to um, My Hero Academia. There's like a it's not an opening, but it's that na 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 eh, eh. yeah. I cannot. Yeah, like that just that gets me. Uh, what's your What's your thoughts on fan service? Um, I mean, I can see why people like it. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not against it, but I'm not for it. Like, I like moderate fan service. Like, if it happens occasionally, like oh, like ever so often, like okay, whatever. But if it's just blading in your face like all the time, then I'm just like, yo, like, okay, come on, like I I get it. He or she is phenomenal, but we don't need that all the time. Like that's why the only thing I don't like about Fire Force is that what's her name, the one character, the Fire yeah. Fox girl, yeah. and that her yeah. quirk, like her quirk personality thing is her having her slip ups, and I'm like that's that's. Weird. <laughs> Can fan service ruin an anime for you? It could. It it could, especially if the that's because there's some there's some animes that are centered around fan service in a way. Like like you could say yeah. that you could argue that Food Wars in a way part of it is fan service. So they and they pull with that and they know that and they pull with that with their plot and it makes sense. While other animes where it has nothing to do with it and it's just there just to be there. It just it can ruin it for me. Like like the only way I can look over it is if the plot is great. If the plot is not great, then I stop. Is there an anime in mind that had a lot of fan service, but it was the plot that saved it and kept you interested? Um. So there's two. So at first, I was like, for me, Food Wars, Food Wars, because they they had a lot of it, especially involving food, which got weird. I was like, okay, but the plot, <laughs> the characters. <laughs> real they did look over it and I'm just like oh it's a show about cooking and they're already taking this stuff seriously I liked it so okay that that made me look past it I was like okay and the second one I forgot what it's called but it's like it's based off of it's like the haiku for swimming free there you go that's it free free I, yeah I know he's <laughs> that is just blatant like male fan service yeah, but yeah. I do like the characters. Okay, the characters are pretty funny. They're pretty likable. It reminds me of Haikyuu, so it's just like, okay. I look past it. How do you think the future of anime is going to be? Honestly, I would say that it has, like, a great future. Nice. I definitely say it has a great future, especially if they're pulling from other sources like now they're especially pulling from webtoons like Tower of God, um, God of High yeah. School, both webtoons. Now they have their own animes. Um, I see Lily um, when the My Hero movie came out. Lily fast food chains um, were actually doing um, advertising for the movie. Like I saw, Ar oh, I was on Facebook. I saw an Arby's. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, yeah, I saw that. I mean, out of all the restaurants, I don't know why Arby's, but Arby's did one with um, the My Hero movie. Uh, same thing with um. They also did not just my hero. They also did One Piece as well. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. And a lot of people are just getting into it. Like I knew it is. A, I knew it has a bright future because my father is getting into anime. Wow. And he really thought that not in a bad way, but he just thought cartoons were just cartoons. He never thought cartoons would take the level of seriousness that it does. And he started watching anime. He the only one he knew about was Dragon Ball Z. But now my brothers are. He's finally opened up to anime. Like the, I think the newest anime he's watching right now is um, Baki. Oh, nice! And he's seen some of Parasite. So he asked me the other day, like, "Oh, yeah, is there any anime oh, that you watch?" Watching. I'm like, "You're, you're asking me? You watch anime? Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brother's got me into uh, what's it called, Baki. I'm like, you watch Baki? <laughs> but yeah, I just say that, especially with the quality." of the, I'll say the animation and how they're, how they're writing it. I definitely say that um, 
anime has a bright future. I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. And I definitely can see it growing more, especially if more people are getting into it. And granted, there are some people who are just doing it because of, you know, popularity. But still, for me, I don't get too upset about that because it just gets the word out. Same. Yeah. Definitely same. Now, on that note, do you think that the definition of anime will change from uh, it having to be uh, made in Japan to, hey, it's just an art style that came from Japan? Do you think that will ever happen? I definitely see it changing in the future because especially if more people are watching anime and more people are inspired by anime, I definitely see anime expanding its definition. Um, because they're, because even, even then, like, the term anime is actually pretty vague because I watched a YouTube video on it and I think it was also done by um, Getting the Robot. They talked about it a little bit. It's a YouTube channel for those who are wondering. And get in the room. Uh, I know. <laughs> um, but they talked about a little bit how the actual definition of anime is actually pretty vague and it has different definitions. If it, it depends on what you're asking. But of course the main definition is that it's um animation made in Japan. And but some but some um anime kind of break that rule. For example, like most of Afro Samurai was made in America then later produced parts of it in Japan, then produced that in, um, shown at the same time in both, in both Japan and America. Wow. But it's in um, an anime. Um, or animation style, people go like, oh, what about the animation style itself? Like, there's some anime, if you actually like see some anime in Japan, like they don't even fit the description of the anime style that we all know. Yeah, it's crazy. Like some of them look like actually children's like cartoons, but they can they are considered anime. Yeah, I think the definition of anime is all over the place. I I definitely wanted to also ask you this. What do you what is your favorite thing? The thing you like the most about the anime community? I'll say the thing I like the most about the anime community is hmm. Time to go. I think just coming together, liking, even if it's not the same anime, it's just coming together that we all watch anime. We all know how great anime is and what it can do and how it makes us feel. I think that part's really awesome. And the the ability to know when um, someone's walking down the street and someone says, oh, I like your shirt and they know what it is. I like I got surprised at so many people telling me like they like my shirt because they knew what One Piece was or Dragon Ball Z or certain anime. Well, you, you got a lot of compliments on it. Yes, they're like, oh, I I went to to get my um our tires changed, and one of the um mechanics was like, oh, I like your shirt, and I thought it was my Goku shirt, but I looked at my shirt again. I was like, oh, I'm wearing my One Piece. Thing. You, you watch One Piece? He's like, yeah, I watch One Piece. I was like, oh, that's dope. Like. <laughs> and my, then my wife tried to pl- uh, try to plug him in by telling him to go follow me on TikTok and stuff like that. He's like, "Oh yeah, he he does stuff on he does stuff on TikTok. You definitely should check it out." And he, he actually did have a TikTok. I was like, "Oh, oh nice, <laughs> yo, that that's dope, man." Uh, so I have one last, actually two last questions. And again, thank you for for doing this. I really appreciate it, man. I had a lot of no fun problem. with you. I hope you enjoyed this too. Um, so what do you think new gener- do you think that new generation anime has sacrificed plot for animation? Um that that honestly all depends on which anime. On which anime because people don't know this but 40 anime are produced every month. What? And- yeah, 40 anime, or roughly 30 to 40 anime are produced every month. There are some anime that you never heard of. I We, we were talking about yesterday on our um, GoJ13 group chat, we talked about anime in 2020. There were a bunch of anime I've never heard of that came out in 2020. Wow. And that was just like, and they said, um, you look up it again, you're just like, um, anime 2020 October, and you see a bunch of anime that came out just in October alone. And that's the part that's crazy. So 
to me, it all depends on the anime. There's some anime that do prefer animation and good, like good graphics over overall plot. But there's some animes that do both, or like maybe their animation is like okay, but their plot's very good. Like for example, or don't have a great plot that don't have a great animation. Like Black Clover, Black Clover doesn't have the best animation, but its plot mm. keeps it alive. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100 percent And also, man, uh during the month of February, uh Black History Month, you spent so much of that month um breaking down black characters in anime. And I genuinely I didn't see anyone else do that. I really appreciated it because I always came from the perspective that there's so little representation, you know, and when you spent that month doing it. It, it taught me so much. So I wanted to know from you, do you feel like now there is a lot of, do you think that black people are represented in anime well? Um, I say that we're in a better spot than before. I feel like there's still a lot of learning to do because there's some characters that come off very, um, like bad stereotyping in a way, like, you know, the lips and all that kind of stuff. And which is, and then the part I kind of don't agree with is that people are like, oh, but that's how, you know, Japan knows, like, you know, certain mediums. And I'm just like, but there are other anime that do that a lot better. And I always bring up Soul Eater and the whatever the animation studio that does Soul Eater, I, I applaud them because they gave us a, an actual black character. And the part I love about it is that they actually solidified that he's a black character. Because, you know, some animes, we can get away with saying that they're black and you never really know. And <laughs> they, yeah. You never really know if they actually are black, but we just get away with it. But no, he, they're like, no. Um, Killick Run is actually a black character. He is of African descent. And that's the part. I love the most. And then, of course, they're doing it again with Fire Force with um, the character Ogun Montgomery, and which I found which was great. And I was happy to see him in the second episode of Fire Force. And, but there's some animes that do it very well. Um, what's it called? Uh, what's it called? What's it called? Michiko Melandro. That one. Uh, there's some that do pretty good. But oh, uh, uh, blood uh, iron blooded orphans did a really good job. Afro they did a really samurai. good job. Afro samurai did a good job. Yeah, there, there's, there's, a, there's a lot, man. And hey, thank you for answering that question. Thank you for answering all these questions and taking the time out to do this. So this is the Q and A portion. So guys, if you want to ask me to show you anything, now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> So anything you guys want to know? It's probably going to be a devil fruit, devil fruit question. It's always a devil fruit question. Oh, yeah. I, I'd be shocked if it's not a devil fruit question. Uh, so, Yo Yogis, me too. Who's your favorite character in One Piece? My favorite character in One Piece, and people who watch One Piece will know if you look at my um, profile pic, is Admiral Fujitora. So Admiral Fujitora is this great, He's an admiral, and admirals are a big deal in One Piece. They're, like, very powerful individuals. And he's a blind swordsman. And he, and the thing is, he actually self-blinded himself because he wanted to be blind to um, justice. He wanted to do justice to its purest form. Because, you know, Lady Liberty, she is blind. So just Lady Justice oh, wow. is blind to justice. So he wanted to do that. But he has great observation hockey, and it gives him the ability to still see. In a way, he can see people's true auras and their true intents. And the part I like about them, because in the Marines, they all have their forms of justice, their own personal forms of justice. And everybody, like um, the main bad guy, you could say, um, on Kaino, he has absolute justice. No ifs, ands, or buts. If you, if you still can, you need to go straight to jail. Um, then there's Aokiji, who has lazy justice, who believes in justice to a point. And Fujitora believes in um, gambling justice, or what's it called? Um... I want to say he has gambling just like because he's also a gambler. He likes to gamble a lot. And he not only is he gambling games, he also gambles in real life and decisions that he makes. Like there are times where he actually takes the gamble and helps out Luffy. Wow. 
So yeah, I, I find him a very respectable character. I find him great, and he's very well fleshed out. And the part I love the most is that he, one of his biggest regrets is that he blinded himself because he wanted to see Luffy's face. He wanted to see what he truly looked like because he felt that Luffy was something different. And he says, I'm going to see him in the future. And another thing I also like about him, post time skip Zoro has no like true like arch rivals when it comes to swordsmanship. Like he, I'll say pre time skip he did. There's a lot of people who messed him up. But post time skip, there was barely anybody except for Fujitora. Fujitora was on par with him each time. He's never shown any like stones of strife when he was fighting him. While well, we see Zoro struggling, while Fujitora is just calm and collective just fighting this man. I thought that was very awesome. So yeah, he's one of my favorite characters in One Piece. Wow, nice. That was crazy. That One Piece is deep. Uh, Morally Gray asks, what are your thoughts on Boruto? What are my thoughts on Boruto? So, <laughs> as a manga, it's great. I like it. I mean, for me personally, I'm not a big fan of aliens in, in a world about ninja. I'm not a big fan of that portion, but I do like the direction that the manga is going. How the, the anime needs some more work. I feel like there's just a lot more filler or filler-ish going on with Naruto, on um, with Boruto. I just feel like there's no real stakes or there's a lot of... At first, I was like, oh, it's got a lot of chill time. I like that. Sometimes I like, you know, chill moments, but there was, like, too much chill time in Boruto. I'm like, okay, there's nothing really going on. We have a little episode about them arguing over hamburgers and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Did not know that. Uh, Dylan One Will as favorite One Piece arc. Favorite One Piece arc? I'll have to say it's between definitely Water 7. Water 7 was such a great arc. I felt that they hit all the points. Like that, that alone felt like a movie. Like it felt like a, it hit all the, it had stakes. It had, it felt like a James Bond movie to a point to me. It felt like everything hit very well. And it felt like James Bond meets Bruce Lee, the game of death. And <laughs> it had all those things. But it felt fantastic. And I think a, a runner-up right now will have to be Wano. How Wano is, it's the current arc, by the way, for those who are wondering. And how it's leading up, the stories, the backstories for Wano and what it's leading up to. I think Wano could be another great arc. Because it, it's giving me those Water 7 vibes because there's a lot of plots going on and it's just wonderful. Like, there's a lot of strategic thinking going on. I'm like, oh, this is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see the end result. Wow, nice. <laughs> um, Dream 7 asks, what anime do you think... Ooh, uh, what anime did you think had potential but didn't? What anime did I think that had potential but didn't? Um, what anime didn't have potential? I really don't know. I really, I'm trying to think, because I had one in mind that, oh, well, you asked me this yesterday, because I think I was talking to it about my wife. I was telling her, like, there was an anime that, oh, I like it, but it's con like, it could have had a better concept. I cannot think of it at the moment. No, it escapes me at the moment. I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. <laughs> it's it's okay. It's okay. Um, Joe Pie one one sixteen has favorite piece of anime merch. Favorite piece of anime merch. It will probably have to be my hidden miss headband. Nice. Because I never owned a Naruto headband until now. Like I always wanted one, but you know, other things would come up and just say, like, "Huh, I never really." I don't really own a lot of anime merch as it is. So the headband was one of the first things I got for anime merch. So I was like, oh, this is great. And it represents my favorite village, which if people look at me crazy when I say my favorite village is the hit and miss. I just find like it has so much history in it that it's real dope. And then I'll say my One Piece hoodie. The One Piece hoodie is great. Yeah, the one who's been doing stove now. All right, so we're going to take a, a, a couple more. Uh, uh, Simply Lem asked, Me Too, what made you want to make the content that you make? So what made me want to make the content I make is because I'm not going to lie, I, 
I talk my everybody I know's ears off on just pop culture. I talk to them about like whatever it is, like Game of Thrones, Marvel superheroes, um, anime, and and I was just like, well, and I was still kind of do the TikTok, and I just did skits at first. And I, it made me think, like, well, I already talk people, I, I talk off my family's ears a lot about anime. I might as well just do it to complete strangers and see if they would vibe with it or not. And I'm like, like, you go back to my early ones, like, I was still trying to figure out how people just talk to a screen when nobody there. I just, I felt awkward. It seems so cool that, so chill, I'm really good at it now. But before, I, it just felt so awkward, so awkward just to be on the phone with nobody around talking to yourself pretty much to a screen mm -hmm. about things. But I don't know. I, I just love talking about anime. I love information and giving people information on things they probably didn't know or things that they probably didn't know or things that are misconceptions or just my own thoughts on like, oh, what could have done, what could have been done better or I don't know, just my own opinions on it. So I think that what makes me do what I do. Oh, nice, man. Uh, okay, so also uh, Cameron Brodeur asks, who would win, Enel or Croc? Ah, Enel? The man is living lightning versus Crocodile, who is living sand. But I'm not going to lie, I would go with Enel because he... His devil fruit can be used anywhere, pretty much. I mean, of course, crocodiles too, but like he's at his best when he's in a desert like climate. While Enel is just living lightning, he can do almost anything. He can really summon lightning from a different, um, he could be in one part of the island and he can summon lightning on another part of the island. Wow. And plus, he has great observation hockey to the point where his observation, uh, observation hockey gives him the ability to hear everything within an entire island. He heard all the voices of the people and Skypea. When people were talking smack, that's why people feared him because when people you say anything wrong or things that he doesn't agree with or you say anything wrong about Enel, like with one scene with Luffy and the one of the I guess guides for Skypea said something that she wasn't supposed to say and everybody feared for their lives. So I'm just sitting here like, what's the problem? And they all just backed up and out of nowhere, lightning struck. <laughs> like what the God, like God itself. I was just like Wow, <laughs> what was that? And and he's very and the part that's so weird and the, the part that's scary about Enel is that he's a very calm and collective individual. He doesn't really get angry, but when he's mad, he just his face just goes blank. Because when he was sitting here talking to one of the um people up there, just messing with him, and he heard someone else was giving away information, he just stopped talking. He was all slumped like this, and he just got up, just looks straight faced, got up, stood up, his body started lightning like all over his place all over his body and just struck that person from wherever, the, wherever they were in that area. <laughs> He's a scary individual. I would not mess with that guy at all. I would oh, this, say, you know what? Th this is a great question. What do you think is the most useless uh, devil fruit? Oh my gosh. There's like so many actually. Like there's, <laughs> there's so many that you can debate on which one's the worst. So I'll definitely say that one of the worst has to be the jacket jacket fruit. And the jacket jacket fruit, by its name, it gives you the ability to turn yourself into a jacket. And you can someone can wear you and you gain their like abilities. So at first it seems cool, but it's not okay. because you would think that like say if I had the jacket jacket fruit and you wore me, you would think that our, our strength would double. It doesn't. I get exactly whatever you have. So if you were, so say if someone weak put on, put you on, you will be weak just like them. You don't gain any more <laughs> abilities just like that. And that's it. And plus another thing, which is not confirmed yet, the person has to be willing. If no one is not willing to put on the jacket, jacket fruit, then you're basically, there's nothing else you can do. Now that's what we've been shown. The people who put on, the person who has the double fruit, all the people who um, wore him were willing. We haven't seen him use it against someone who wasn't willing. If he can do it against someone's will, then that could be useful. But if he has, if the person has to be willing, then it's just a, it's just a terrible devil fruit. I would not want that at all. I because so there's some devil fruit you can get away with. Like okay, if 
all depends on the person because the part I love about devil fruits is that there's some devil fruits that seem weak, but it all depends on the person. If you are smart enough and you are imaginative enough, you can make that weak devil fruit very powerful. But there are some devil fruits that that's not the case. Like the jacket, jacket fruit, there's no way. I kept thinking about it different ways. There's no way you can make that fruit powerful. What what's what's a create what's a weak fruit seemingly weak fruit but if you're using it creatively it's like amazing. So there's a devil fruit I don't know the exact name for it but I'm just gonna call it the draw draw fruit which it gives you ability to draw things and everything you draw can come to life. But the person who had the devil fruit okay. was awful at drawing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He was awful at drawing, so it's just like, oh, it was counterproductive. So, but if you were good at drawing, or just at least moderately decent, because he was awful. He was awful. <laughs> Couldn't even draw a stick figure right. So, if you were moderately good at drawing, that devil fruit can be incredibly useful. And I'm not a huge artist, but I do draw occasionally. And if I had that devil fruit, I'm not gonna lie, I would be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like I couldn't even even as a poor artist, I'd make that work. Like I draw wonky looking bullets or something. I'd make it. <laughs> I'd make it work to my event. That's the world of One Piece is so insane. Like anytime I watch your videos on these devil fruits or just characters, I'm like. Like the like, I couldn't just the whole like. Uh, anytime I make JoJo co uh, content, some of the comments that I get the most are like JoJo stands are outrageously overpowered, and I'm like, compared to the world of One Piece, I don't know because like, <laughs> yeah, you could just be on an island and you say something and people just look to the sky, like move back and just watch you get hit by lightning. Like that's absolutely crazy. Definitely. So, yeah, man. Uh, one last question, and then and then we could wrap it up. Uh, uh, and the last question is: Hey, me too. Which power system is your favorite by Sydney? What's my favorite power system? It's so sorry. Hard. To put you There's so many. Like it's so many great ones. Like I love. Though it's complicated, I like Nen. I like the process of Nen from Hunter Hunter. I also like Alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist. But if I if I had to pick one, like if if I had to pick one, it's it's between full it's it's between Alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood or Devil Fruits. Because the thing that is cool about devil fruits is that you don't really necessarily have to work hard to get a devil fruit. Like you can just find a random one around the world and you can just bite into it. Of course, you still have to learn what your abilities are and stuff like that. But like, there's no predetermined effort. You just you grab it, you eat it, you know what your abilities are and you figure out from there. And it's not that hard to figure out what your abilities are. There's literally a character who just ate a devil fruit literally an hour ago and he was able to figure out what his devil fruit was, and he was able to mess up Zoro. Wow. Oh, uh, before we go, there was one question I've always been curious about. Is there, has there ever been a devil fruit user that tried to defend a devil fruit tree or a specific devil fruit because it was so powerful they didn't want anyone else having it? Um... I'll say that that technically, the technique doesn't really happen, but there are different fruits that are powerful that, like, in the wrong hands, they're like, this can be awful. And the sad thing about different fruits is once a different fruit user dies, like, the different fruit can reincarnate, and you don't know where it reincarnates. Unless there's fruit near you, then it could reincarnate to the nearest fruit, but, I mean, not everybody has fruit lying around. But, um, <laughs> But there's one definitely that people around the world in the world of One Piece fear, and that is the Tremor Tremor Fruit, which that the character Whitebeard had. It gives him the ability to make shock waves 
anywhere, earthquakes anywhere, and he could do it with, even within the air. He, he literally punched the air, and it made a crack in the air, and it made the entire island shook. He, he literally scratched the air, and it made an island flip over, or almost flip over, uh, and just made the waves crash. And to the point where the fleet admiral, the person who's in charge of the admirals, he said that that fruit could destroy the world. So, and there's some different fruits that, that people don't talk about that have the potential, like Fuji Taro's different fruit. He has the ability to control gravity itself. He's been shown to, to pull meteors from the sky, like Madara, just flying from the sky to hit a certain area if he wanted to. That one could be very dangerous. Like, imagine if he put, and he shows no signs of stress or, like, weakness when he does pull it out. Because, you know, sometimes when they do a move, like, these show kind of like, oh. Um, All this energy or something. Though. Never. He's never shown ever showing weakness when he does that. And imagine if he really wanted to go all out. He can probably find the biggest meteor he can find. And probably can wipe out the Earth if he wanted to. <laughs> Effortlessly. Just like... He could just end it all. like, And <laughs> no one can really stop him unless they're that strong enough to, to destroy a meteor all right, like that. Um, on, on that note, man, thank you, bro. I I really loved getting to know more about you. Um, you're an inspiration to me as a creator, man. I really admire you so much. Uh, guys, everybody, thank, thank you for being... Oh, yeah, man. And and everybody, thank you for being here. This was the Potomay cast. I can't wait to see you guys another time.